paragraph. Then two points on the graph would constitute what I'm going to call two events. Okay? in the graph represent two events, and the fundamental triangle What does the run of the fundamental triangle tell you? Let's just say this is X and this is Y. What's the run tell you? The change of the x value. Sorry? The change of the x value. Yeah, it's a change in the x value. Okay. I'm going to say it just a little differently to expand the vocabulary a little bit. run represents a change in the quantity represented by x. change in the quantity represented by y. Okay? Now, if x is the pendulum length, then y is uh, the pendulum frequency, then that wouldn't be, yeah, this graph would not be a graph of pendulum length versus frequency, but more generally, you have two points on the graph of pendulum length versus pendulum frequency, right? Okay? And frequency goes down with length, so it kind of looks like the 1 over x function. So we might as well just draw what that graph looks like. Okay? It's not really the 1 over x function. But it kind of looks like it. Okay? A little of check. You know how the 1 over x squared function is steeper than the 1 over x function? Well, the function for the pendulum is less steep than that. But it still has the same basic shape. Okay? Then, I'll draw a fundamental triangle up there. Well, What event corresponds to the first point? Well, if I put coordinates on this, let's say this is 2, and this is 
240. So the first point is 240. What's the event? What happens? What happened so that we would get that point on the graph? What happened with the pendulum? What's going on with the actual system? System is the pendulum. What does the point 240 tell us? It's a height of 2, a frequency of 40. Yeah, when the pendulum has a length of 2, the frequency is 40, right? So. And they're going to be units, okay? And you want to write the units down if you have the units, okay? For gravity, I'll just write down the numbers. We always want to write down the units if they're present, okay? Now, if that point is 240, what do you estimate this second point is? What's the event corresponds to the second point? We got a scale there, you can make an estimate. It shouldn't take you more than a couple of seconds to come up with a reasonable estimate. Okay, how about um, would it be reasonable to say that the uh, length is 10 and the frequency is 100? Be totally unreasonable because the two's here, ten's out there somewhere. It's not here, and this is less than this. So hundred, you know, I mean, this is forty. It's a white coordinate. It'll be less than forty, right? So what? You mean a couple of numbers? Six and ten. Again? Six and ten. Six and ten. Okay. Uh, And pendulum length six has a frequency of ten, right? So what's the run mean? What's it represent? It getting longer. Again? It's getting longer. What's that? The run. It means it's getting longer. The pendulum is getting longer. Okay, yeah. It means the pendulum's getting longer, right? Okay. Now, I'm going to say that this represents Between the two events, like change by four, right? Because that, of course, is the run. The leg of the triangle is going to have four here. So, in similar language, what does a rise represent? Okay, frequency decreased by 30, right?
you got a rise and negative 30, you probably can't read that, but it's there. Okay? So when you look on the video, if you use a decent size screen, you'll be able to read it. Um, okay, so, uh, so what do you conclude? If the length changes by 4 between two events, and between the same two events, the frequency changes by negative 30, we want to get it to the point where it's natural for you to say, okay, well, let's see, that'd be a slope of negative 30 over 4, which is negative 7 and a half, which means that on the average, for every unit change in the length, the frequency decreased by 7 and a half. Okay? So the slope represents <laughs> represents an average change of negative seven point five units of frequency. This graph doesn't look anything like a pendulum, but it represents behavior of the pendulum in a way that you can reason out. Because you can all, you can, if I give you a different graph, you can just replace all the words I wrote here with the words that relate to the graph, and you can figure out what the average rate of change of this is for every unit of change in this. Okay? extraordinarily important idea that I will keep assigning until everybody's got it. Okay? And people don't have it very well right now, but there's progress. Now, I didn't look at what you just had. Okay? Uh, so, uh, hopefully there's even more progress. But we, we, we want to get this nailed down. Okay? Fair enough? <laughs>